Good morning, this is just a quick video on how I went about making the easel and the sign for my sister's wedding. I started out with a scrap piece of plywood and then I marked out a rectangle the size that I wanted my sign. I used an old paling that I clamped down that I used as a straight edge to run my circular saw along. I then gave it a light sand with 120 grit on the sander. I used pallet wood palings for the frame and then I just ran them through the table saw to get them to the width that I was after. Back to the piece of ply. I marked out a 50mm reference line around the inside of the whole edge, held the first paling against that line, then lightly mark where the vertical palings will be matching up. Grab your speed square and draw a 45 from that point. Cut along your line, flip it over, quickly cut off the excess so it's not so heavy one end, and then cut your angle. When you have all the pieces of your frame cut, gently lay them along your reference line to see how well they fit. Once you're happy, mark out where you want your screws to be. Pre-drill all your holes. Clamp down your frame to prevent it from moving around. I use 20mm chipboard screws to hold the frame on from the back side. Moving on to the stand for the easel. I used lengths of 35 by 70 non-structural pine that I ripped down the centre using the table saw. I then ran those through the thicknesser to clean up all the faces. These cleaned up really nicely. Flip the sign over so the back is facing you and then mark in 340mm from the top edge on either side. And then move down to the bottom edge and mark 200mm in from both sides. Grab a straight edge and connect your dots. These will be the guidelines when attaching the two front legs of the stand. Mark and then pre-drill your holes and then give them all a chamfer. Now we're making the short horizontal piece for the top of the easel. I drilled two pocket holes on the back side of this piece to give it a cleaner looking finish from the front. Now for the bottom horizontal rails. I hold a length of 35 by 35 at my chosen height and then mark that angle with a pencil. Cut it, hold it back in place and check that the other side is marked correctly before cutting it. Add in a second rail at the bottom if you like and then lean everything up against a chair to get the tilt that you're looking for. Once you've cut the angle of the back leg, take up the space with an off cut of the plywood. It was starting to get dark, but I had to get this build done. The last piece to go on was the support for the back leg, and I just did this the same way as the front rails. But this time I did the pocket holes on the underside. Moving on to the font and the painting. I took my sign measurements into Photoshop and marked out A4 grids, decided on the fonts and placement, crop and save each individual section and then lay them out and tape them together. Tape them to your frame. I took out some little notches from the paper so that I had a better surface to tape them to. So for the first part of this sign I heavily trace around the outside of the letters, leaving a light indentation as a painting guide but my mum suggested carbon paper and that took a lot of pressure off my hand so I did that for the remainder of the sign. I did this in small sections just so it didn't get too boring. I used a dark brown paint instead of a black because the brown has a warm undertone that matches the timber whereas most black paint has a cool undertone and doesn't look anywhere near as nice. I add a fair bit of drying retarder to the paint this just prevents it from drying out and I can stop and come back and forth throughout the day without it completely drying out on me. And then just very gently paint between the lines. My mum is a florist and she added the fig leaves and the fake flowers to bring this whole thing together. If you wanted to use this as more of a practical easel opposed to a decorative piece, you could very easily add a lip to the bottom edge to rest your paper or canvas on. 
If you like this video or found it somewhat helpful, then give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give me a thumbs down if you like, but either way, I hope I see you next time.